are certainly blessed with world-class museums in Chicago, but did you know about the Fairways, Greens, and Club at the Center of History in Wheaton? There you can find a collection of golf artifacts which truly capture the growth of the game with a little Chicago flair, I might add. Dave Lockhart gives us a tour. Up Close is brought to you by The Perfect Connection. Uh, golf balls have certainly come a long way, Alberta, and you've got some neat ones here that have a lot of history behind them. Well, it is interesting. We have a feathery, which is not as, would be the second golf ball. The first golf ball was actually a wooden ball, similar to a croquet ball, only smaller. The feathery looks like a mini softball. It does have a leather casing, and it gets its name because it's stuffed with feathers. They would take a top hat full of feathers, boil them, and stuff them into there. You could only make about five featheries a day, so they were quite costly. So then when the gutta percha ball came around, that was a gummy substance that they could mold and shape, and that's also how you get the different finishes on the ball. Some have line cuts, some have the concave dimples, some have the, the, the a grip of the, the bramble finish with the bubbles at the top. The pattern on the exterior of the ball has really changed the sport of golf. Made the ball fly a different way, the trajectory, etc. The ball behind the feathery that looks like it's in bad condition, which of course it is, but it's important because that's an original Haskell ball. That's the first rubber core ball. What the Center of History tries to do is to recognize some of the pioneers in the game who didn't necessarily get the credit they deserve for their ideas and inventions, including an African American who invented the tea. Dr. Grant, he was a dentist. He was. Um, invented the first wooden tee. We have a copy of his patent as early as 1899. Prior to that, we were just using sand to form your tee to tee your ball up. But he didn't market it very well. We all know marketing is the key here. And another dentist in the 20s patented two wooden tees. And for years, he got credit for it. And so Dr. Grant was kind of forgotten. And that's what we do here also. We kind of show some of the individuals that really contributed to the sport, but maybe didn't get the recognition that, well, perhaps we feel they, they deserve. All right, we're looking at Charles Blair McDonald, one of the most famous architects of the day and uh, got a lot of credit for building Chicago golf. Tell us a little bit about this part of the exhibit. Well, this does feature Chicago golf and certainly you can't talk about Chicago golf without talking about Charles Blair McDonald. He did design the 18 holes in, at Chicago golf in Wheaton and he did it uh, cl clockwise because he had a slice, so he made the course fit his game, which if I was him, I would have done the same thing. But he really played an important role. He was a very good golfer. He won the 1895 Amateur, but he also had a personality that he never liked to lose. There's several stories I could tell you about Charles Blair McDonald. We're in one of your favorite parts of the museum, the Fowles Brothers exhibit. Tell us about it. Well, yeah, yes, the Fowles Brothers came from St. Andrews, Scotland, and their father was a shop supervisor for old Tom Morris, and Tom Morris is certainly still revered as the ultimate golfer. And so there were three brothers, James, David, and Robert, who were all course designers, ball makers, club makers. And they actually lived in Wheaton, and they're buried in Wheaton, and they have designed over 40 courses in America. They also patented equipment besides uh, making clubs and balls. They the Mashi Niblick, which is a great invention for its time because it had the first angle, the concave. A lot of people say it's like the seven iron today, but it allowed the ball to get some lift and land better on the green, so to say. Also, the cup and the flag that we're familiar with, that was done by David Fowles. And here we have, we show his patent for it. There's just really neat things here with old hickory shafted clubs and wonderful historic trophies. And then there's the obscure, like this neat artifact from Joe Jemzik's St. Andrews course in West Chicago. Get lucky, and you win some golf balls. What we have in this exhibit, it looks like an interior of a clubhouse. And so it's completely different than just the standard cases. And we tell a story about golf. And golf is more than what Tiger Woods did or Bobby Jones did. It really also has to do with the technology and also the social life, how golf has changed. Certainly a lot of great golf course history in Chicago, but also a lot of great manufacturers uh, did their thing here as well. Yeah, Chicago used to be the number one hub of golf manufacturing. You had Wilson, you had Spalding, you had a lot of other smaller organizations that made golf equipment. You had Ram and you had other things like that. Also, we have a, box, a sleeve of Poto golf balls. Those are sold at Walgreens, only at Walgreens, an exclusive Walgreens item. But it was named Poto after Mrs. Walgreens' dog. So there's a little dog image on there. But it's interesting, even the bag that was Burke, that was the Chicago manufacturing, all these things in here really are Chicago manufactured golf items. Certainly a one-of-a-kind golf museum right here in our own backyard in Wheaton. It Alberta, is in your own backyard. thanks so much. Thank you for coming.